this week we talk about individualization. And I think the thing to understand really with individualization is that everyone's different, you know? So um, what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. When you look at studies, you look at averages. But in any study, some people responded, some people did not respond. So what does that mean? Well, let, let's talk about this. Um, uh, we are really talking about fat loss. So the first post we talked about is, um, does insulin sensitivity, will that determine fat loss? And basically, um, how do you measure insulin sensitivity? Well, one easy way is a glucose tolerance test. So glucose tolerance test, you essentially consume 70 grams of glucose, Oh my God, right? It's a ton of glucose, but <laughs> for me anyway, some of you guys maybe know. Um, but say you took 75 grams of glucose, and after two hours, you look where it is. And after two hours, it should be uh, normal. At minimum, it should be like below 140 uh, milligrams per deciliter. And blood glucose is cheap. So after two hours, it should be below 140. But if you're past 200, or to be honest, if you're over 140, you're probably insulin resistant. And what studies show with, now why is that important? That's going to talk about individualized dieting. So again, if you're under 140 or you're not, you're, you're, you should be closer to baseline, you have problems because your baseline should be 80 milligrams per deciliter to 100 milligrams per deciliter. But we want you under 140 after two hours of a 75 milligram carbohydrate load. But after two hours, if you're like over 140, to 200, you're insulin resistant, like greater than 200, we're talking about diabetes. So, what does that mean? Our next study, we talked about glycemic index. What is glycemic index? Well, glycemic index essentially is um, how fast a carb is digested relative to like white bread. So, high glycemic index is going to digest fast, it's like white bread, it's like sugar, um, you know, like glucose, think table sugar, things of that nature. Um, you know, it's low glycemics, more like an apple, um, oatmeal, um, beans, lentils, things of that nature. So basically, the there's a study we talked about where if you had high, if you were insulin resistant, glycemic index mattered. Meaning that going lower glycemic index, again, like lentils, beans, um, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, salads, made a difference. You lost more fat than if you went high glycemic, which would be more like breads, um, pastas, rice. But if you were very insulin sensitive, like after two hours, your blood glucose was normal, then you it didn't matter whether you had high glycemic or low glycemic. Does that make sense? So basically, um, if you're very insulin sensitive, you could have lower high glycemic. If you're insulin resistant, you need to select that lower glycemic carbs. Now, um, the next study we talked about was ketogenic dieting. Is it going to work better for some people than others? The answer is yes. Again, what we showed is that if you were insulin resistant, ketogenic dieting worked far better than, if, than a low-fat diet uh, um, uh, if you were insulin resistant. Cool stuff, right? So if, if you're insulin resistant, like if you don't handle carbs well, again, glucose tolerance test, you take 75 grams of glucose, after two hours, you're over 140, then you probably need to um, use a very low carb, high protein, or ketogenic diet, one or the other. Um, but if you're insulin sensitive, keto works for you, or low fat works for you. Um, you know, so both of, those, both of those work for you really well. Uh, so basically it's showing that if you're, if you're insulin sensitive, you're more flexible. Now, later on, we'll talk about how do we improve insulin sensitivity. Um, by the way, guys who are sharing this post, who you guys, you got, six, you got a lot of people here watching this. Do me a favor. Uh, share this with somebody right now. Spread the love because um, we want to get this message out and create a community. So if you could share this, uh, I really appreciate it. It would be awesome. Um, the next thing I want to say, guys, yeah, share, 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 share the love. The next thing I want to tell you is, um, what about, does it change how you diet depending on your body composition? So same individual, but as your body composition changes. Um, so basically, let's say you start off at 20% body fat. 
and you were to do a real low calorie hardcore diet, like a lot of cardio, 1600 calories, um, then you were to say you leaned up and you were 10% body fat and you were going to do a low, very low calorie diet, high cardio. Would there be a difference in the type of mass you lose? The answer is yes. Forbes showed that when you're 20% body fat, there's very low chance of losing muscle. But when you were like uh, 12, 9, 10, sub, sub single or single digits, the probability of losing muscle is much higher on a lower calorie hardcore diet. So what does this tell us? You know, and anti-catabolic agents like HMB, um, uh, you know, BCAs, they can be more expensive. When you have higher body fat, you might not need to worry about anti-catabolic agents. But when you get lower body fat, that's when you invest in anti-catabolic agents. Again, BCAs like HMB, HICA. Um, that's when you need to take those because you need to actually prevent as much as you can that muscle loss. Um, and also maybe even increasing your training frequency to decrease muscle loss. So once again, guys, now I'm going to go to questions and answers. Um, thanks, Paul, for sharing this. Everyone who's on this, if you, again, share this with your friends. Let's spread the love. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to your guys' questions um, here. Let's see what we got. So uh, can keto reverse adult onset diabetes? Uh, Dr. Jeff Bullock's doing a trial right now with ketogenic dieting and um, type 2 diabetes. And he's actually finding that individuals uh, are going into remission with it. So based on his data, that looks very promising. Um, uh, Giorgio, uh, actually, um, Giorgio uh, Bazzoni um, says, Hey doc, how does ketogenic diet affect the gut flora? Because carbs help bac bacteroides and lactobacillus to develop. Absolutely, what, great question. Fiber feeds the good bacteria, okay, like bacteroides and uh, lactobacillus and uh, so what happens is that when you go, like, if you were to go um, no carbs, there'd be a problem. That's why I like counting net carbs. So you want to try and get, like, 30 grams of fiber a day when you're keto, and then that will be beneficial for bacteria. But if you cut out all that fiber, that would have negative impacts. Ketogenic dieting during the day and backloading uh, uh, for bodybuilding at night. I think a low-carb keto breakfast... And then fading more to like uh, a higher protein, lower carb, and then to higher carbs later could work. Um, good question, Beto. Um, <clears throat> Rubrith says, what would be an ideal post-workout meal on keto? Should you keep it low fat to maximize protein synthesis? Um, Jeff Bullock just did a study on this on glycogen replenishment. I would say more like moderate fat. Um, and the fats should be MCTs. So I would go like MCTs and, um, you know, probably like eggs would be good or MCTs and, um, whey. I have a female client, one who was on keto at 224 pounds, about 2,000 calories per day and not losing. Am I missing something as her coach? Um... Aaron, good question. You might try calorie cycling with her. You might try changing up the workout routine. Things like interval training would be very good. Um, you might try, one thing I was talking to Chris Irvin and Ryan Lowry about, she may not be able to utilize it. I'm guessing that if she, that basically, she might have low mitochondria, so you need to uh, do interval training to build that mitochondria up to be able to use fat. Uh, and one thing Chris Irvin and Ryan Lowry have suggested is supplementing with B vitamins. If you're low on B vitamins, you may not be able to utilize the ketone. So that's some advice you might try. And also make sure she's at that right ratio. And finally, intermittent fasting could work, restricting her feeding period to like 8 to 9 hours a day. Um, Calorie intake does play a part in keto, but not as much. Need to be more of a macronutrient. Okay, I see. Um, what is considered high body fat? I'm saying like anytime you're over 
like 13%, you're for, you know, you're talking about um, being able to spare muscle. Anytime you're under that, you're going to be uh, in danger of losing muscle. Um, I don't like carb backloading on keto because you're not keto when you're doing it. Meat and nuts for breakfast, that works. Um, okay. Keep shooting your questions, guys. I'm going to take about two or three more questions here. Does a long-term ketogenic diet negatively affect insulin sensitivity? Um, that is from Zaron. Great question, Zaron Thomas. No, it improves insulin sensitivity, but your pancreas releases less insulin. So you don't handle glucose as well. So if you're going to go back on carbs, you need to reintroduce them slowly. Um, let's see. Uh, anyone going to do more studies on HMB free acid, ATP studies, impressive results? So, uh, Brian, that's a great question. Just basically you're asking, like, is someone going to replicate it? So we actually did our research on HMB free acid based on a Kramer study in 2009. Uh, and this will be kind of the last question uh, I talk about here. Kramer um, did a study where he basically ended up doing 12 weeks with HMB. He got 0.77 kilogram increase in lean mass per week over 12 weeks time. His subjects could bench press about one times their body weight. Our subjects could bench press 1.3 times their body weight. So not a lot of difference between the subjects. We did a 12-week study. He did a 12-week study. We did the same diet that he did. So we kind of, we found 0.7 kilogram increase lean mass per week. He found 0.77. Um, so we basically replicated his study already. Um, so it would be great for future researchers to come out there and do more, though. Uh, let's see. Great question. And actually, next month we're going to have a... a, a, a point, uh, some discussion on that in Journal of Strength Conditioning Research. Um, okay, uh, so anyway, so last question um, is going to go back to, um, let's see, um, reverse diet on keto, lean muscle gains, how to, I mean, I think last, this is the last thing I'll talk about, when you are coming out of a contest and you are dieting real hard, I don't recommend slow reverse dieting. I recommend basically like going in between back up to your calories. So say that you uh, were had a 1,000 calorie deficit from when you first started, go up 500 calories immediately um, and, and then slowly go back up to where you used to be. So